In this webinar, Philippe Defoe, Sales Director at VoIP MS, welcomes Alan Percy, CMO at Telco Bridges, as a guest speaker. Together, they delve into the world of session border controllers and discuss the role of SBC in managing and protecting complex SIP networks. Thanks, VoIP MS, for hosting this session. Hi, everyone. My name is Philippe Defoe. I'm the Sales Director at VoIP.MS. I'm uh, with Alan Percy, the Chief Marketing Officer at Telco Bridges. Uh, we have invited Alan to uh, talk about the uh, SBC and introduce Telco Bridge, a uh, Montreal-based company, a little bit just like VoIP.MS, um, to introduce uh, Telco Bridges to our customers. Uh, so Tel Telco Bridges is not a, notably a manufacturer of um, equipment for telecommunication operator. However, uh, they make also incredible voice-related hardware and software intended for business, enterprise, and telecommunication resellers. So uh, the webinar will be a high-level presentation of what is a SBC and what are the key benefits to have one using service like VoIP.MS. All during the webinar, um, I did open the chat, so feel free to send questions in the in the chat. We will try to answer them uh, during the webinar. And if uh, there's an unanswered question, we will answer them after. And uh, for the one who are thinking about it, um, the webinar is recorded and will it will be sent to every uh, registrant afterward. So, uh, Alan, thanks for joining us today. Um, yep. I'm going to let you uh, start the show. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Philip. I uh, really appreciate the opportunity to get a chance to share. Let me just get... I'm going to get my uh, screens all set up here. Just give me one second here. So uh, let's start with just a little bit of background um, on Telco Bridges. Uh, I know some of you have worked with us in the past. Others, this is probably new. So just a quick overview. Um, Telco Bridges, uh, you know, as, as Philippe mentioned, is a manufacturer of media gateway and session border controller software, primarily focused for the service provider community. Uh, the intent is, is we build this highly high scalability a highly reliable software and hardware system, you know, dedicated for the uh, service right community. It does um, relate to some large enterprise applications too. So you, when we get into some of the SBC use cases, you'll see where that fits. Company's privately held. It's been profitable for a number of years. Uh, originally founded in 2002, and we're in Boucheville, which is uh, South Shore outside of Montreal. I'm actually based uh, outside of Buffalo, New York. Uh, and of course, our home office is where we do all the hardware, software, final assembly, order processing, finance, and all that's there. Um, we also have offices in Hong Kong, Turkey, and Vietnam where we do support and sales support. And that uh, affords us the opportunity to do that 24 7 uh, technical support. So, maybe just one quick note on our evolution of the company. Over the years, uh, we've um, grown from uh, a couple basic little board level products to help build media gateways to um, actually media gateways as our primary line. And then uh, a number of strategic relationships to offer the media gateways through various channels. And more recently um, in 2015, 16, 17, we've done uh, resale relationships with some of the key NEBS equipment makers. And um, this last year we, um, we signed an agreement with MetaSwitch uh, on uh, building uh, media gateway, uh, enhancing our media gateways to be compatible with their MetaSwitch CFS. And most recently, just a few weeks ago, we announced that we've achieved full certification of those media gateways with MetaSwitch. So a lot's happened over the last few years with our media gateways, but along with it too is the launch of our Pro SBC, our free SBC offerings. And we're gonna talk about uh, those today. So let's just start out with some of the risks. I mean, you know, one of the things people ask um, and how we structured this uh, webinar is kind of a QA. and a you know, we went back and looked at some of the questions that we've gotten over the years of offering session border controllers. You know, what are the things people are asking about? So we're gonna start with this one, which is what are the risks with SIP networks and why would you worry about uh, your the SIP network? Well, it turns out um, there's a couple of categories here. One of them is, is kind of the extortion category. And this is where somebody's gonna go after your, your network um, and they're gonna somehow negatively impact your network uh, with the intent that they're gonna look for some kind of ransom to be able to um, 
uh, alleviate the the stress in your network. So it could be, you know, DOS DDoS attacks. It could be a registration floods, which is you know a flood of registration attempts that uh, overwhelm your systems. Malform messages. Um, that uh, can be a problem because in, um, you know it overloads the uh, processing. Uh, call floods, so sending you know tens of thousands of calls, sort of like a DDoS, but it's more like a TDoS kind of attack. But there's also intrusion, right? Get, getting into network scanning, figuring out you know the topology of your network, maybe doing account hacking, figuring out uh, a- a- accesses. Uh, and then last but not least is theft of services. And so we talk about these things and. You know, usually we kind of quietly will be one-on-one with some of our customers and we get um, admissions many times from one of them more recently was, uh, we're talking to one of our regional resellers and he admitted, he said, I I stood up a new asterisk-based call service and it took 10 minutes until a scanner found it and started to beat on it. And um, so this is the kind of risks that, that that occur in the real world and our, you know, our customers are dealing with. So the next question that comes up quite often is, can a firewall protect a SIP network? You know, I, I know I've got a firewall on my data network. Can it protect my SIP application? And the answer is kind of sort of, and let me tell you why the kind of sort of and why the, where this fits. Well, first of all, you have to understand a little bit about SIP. And SIP, um, when it comes into... Uh, you know, usually into a, a, either a service provider or an enterprise, you know, SIP has some pretty well-known port numbers, either TCP or UDP port numbers that it's going to come in on. And you can program your firewall so that it knows about those and passes them along uh, to, you know, your SIP server or your, you know, your application. The problem is, though, is that SIP also uses UDP ports for RTP to pass the actual media. And those RTP ports change all the time and the mechanism that people had been using to protect their network is they open a large range of ports for the UDP ports to let the RTP pass through and then in a process the net of it was is that they left open this you know this huge screen door of of that would allow RTP packets to come into um, uh, an enterprise. And that's one of the mechanisms that the bad guys have been using to flood networks, is they find a, find an RTP port that's open and they can go ahead and flood it. So the problem is the firewalls don't know the relationship between the SIP message, what port number a particular SIP session is going to use for the RTP and such. It can't dynamically open and close those, those, those uh, ports for the RTP. So we got a couple options. One of them is, you know, dynamically manage the firewall. And we'll talk about how SBCs do that in a few slides. Um, Or, you know, you need something more sophisticated than just a plain old firewall. And that's generally the role of a session border controller. So what is a session border controller? Where does it fit in the network? This is a very, very common question. So you know, in a nutshell, it's it's a network security element. It generally sits on the border between two networks. You know, that's what you know. That's the name, right? Uh, processes SIP messages back and forth from one network to another. And probably one of the most common use cases is between a wide area network and a local area network. And its job is to sit there on that border and look at the traffic that comes and goes, authenticate it, approve it maybe modify it, maybe monitor it, maybe look for attacks. Those are the kinds of things um, that that a session border controller does. Now, the question might be is, well, whose border does it sit on? Well, it usually sits on the border of the person who who cares about their network, right? So uh, a service provider or enterprise or somebody who has a, a point of entry into their network would most likely have a session border controller at that point where their uh, traffic enters the network. Much like it would have a firewall, same basic place on the network. So we're gonna get into some more detail on this. And one of the questions that comes up is, all right, so, all right, I, I think I architecturally understand at a high level, but you know, how does a session border controller actually function? You know, What are the main pieces or main functions within it? And we best describe by this diagram here, which um, shows uh, a number of elements within a session border controller, um, starting on the left with um, the security 
module, which does intrusion detection, does security. And one of the key things it has built into that is the firewall. And it's a dyna dynamic firewall that will be um, protecting the rest of the session border controller and the rest of the network. And what, what's going to happen is that the security modules are going to say, okay, the, the traffic's good. We don't see any problems with it. So we're going to pass it along to something called a B2B UA or a back-to-back -back user agent. And we'll get into that in more detail in a couple of slides. And after the back-to-back -back user agent, it's going to pass the traffic on maybe to a routing engine. And the routing engine will then use uh, algorithms to send traffic off to various destinations. And again, we'll get into this in more detail. And lastly is a media module. And this, this basically handles the processing of the media. Because one of the things also session border co controllers can do is to manipulate the media as it passes through. So it might, for example, have to convert from one codec to another when it's passing through uh, from into the network or out of the network, or it might have to decrypt the media. And these are all kinds of things. So this is the basic, very, very high level uh, diagram of what's going on. So our num number one question probably is, what's a back-to-back -back user agent? And what does it do and how does it work? And we got a couple of slides on that. So a back-to-back -back user agent consists of two elements. One's called a user agent server and the other one's called a user agent client. And uh, both cases, the user agent is, is it specified within the SIP specifications is you know the endpoint for a SIP session. You know, whether it's it's the one that initiates a SIP session or the one it receives a SIP session determines whether or not it's the server or the client. But in a nutshell, what happens is within it is a SIP session will come into an SBC, it'll land on one, one of these uh, user agents, and it'll actually terminate the call at that point. And then from that termination of the call, it gets information ab about the call that it can then use to recreate a new call on, um, on the other side of the back-to-back -back UA. And in doing so, we can now do significant conversion that allows us to do, resolve interoperability issues and topology height. And I got a couple of slides that explain that. All right, so interoperability. And, you know, uh, we used to, in the early days of SIP, we used to talk about that the SIP specification while open, which is wonderful, is very loose, which is bad for people who are trying to implement it. And what do we mean by that? If you actually did a word count on the original 3261 specification for SIP, you found a lot of the words like may and should and uh, optional in the specification. And those are all dangerous words when it comes to interoperability. So there's a lot of little weirdnesses about SIP that um, different vendors have interpreted differently. So if you have, you know, an Avaya switch on one side and, and, you know, maybe a ribbon switch on the other side, there's always going to be a little tiny changes between the SIP signaling that need to be resolved between the two of them. And an SBC is a really good place to do that because you can program one side of that back-to-back -back user agent for one particular set of signaling, and you can configure the other side for the other uh, equipment's signaling uh, requirements. And this allows you to do that conversion from one flavor to another. You can kind of think of it as converting from, you know, vanilla to chocolate as it goes through through the back-to-back uh, -back user agent. And it's a key thing that's used to do this interoperability um, solutions. So it's it's but, a little bit like uh, they both speak the same language, but in two different dialect. So they're, the back-to-back -back agent is uh, the translator of the uh, of the 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 two different dialect or let's say regional speaking instead of dialect, but uh, right, uh, right. Uh, no, nope. good example. Yeah, real good example. Like the differences in French and French. Yes, absolutely, perfect example. In French, like Quebec and France, uh, right. we kind of understand each other's, but uh, if yeah. there's a uh, somebody in the in the middle that can uh, understand both, it's even better. Yep, absolutely. Yep. That very good point. So, um, but there's one other little thing that they can do that's really interesting, which is um, topology hiding and anonymity. And you can imagine a setup here like with the two service providers uh, and um, these two service providers, um, 
well, the service provider on the right is probably a retail service provider, and the one on the left, let's say, is a wholesale provider. So the wholesale provider is um, sending SIP calls. Um, they're going to send them through an SBC that belongs to the retail service provider on the right. And what the provider on the right is going to do is he's going to he's going to hide the topology of the um, wholesale provider. What does that do? That hides the IP addresses. It hides um, the uh, maybe some of the signaling information. The it might DNS hide. of the yep. server, for instance. Yep, the DNS, yeah. some of that. So they're going to hide all this so that the their customers don't know who their wholesale provider is, and um, in that way, as a as a service provider, um, you can maintain control. You know, your customers don't figure out, oh, geez, you're getting your your services from bandwidth. Well, gee whiz, I might as well just go to bandwidth to get them. Maybe I'll get a better price. Or so a reseller from Void.ms yep. uh, who would yep. like to anonymize uh, their traffic. So whenever they send out traffic on the client network, the end user doesn't see Void.ms behind. They see X, Y, Z. Exactly. This also uh, is true for enterprises, right? Enterprises don't like to have people rooting around on their network to see if they can figure out the network topology so they can also hide it. So this is one of the most powerful things of having a back-to-back -back user agent in place is you can do this topology hiding and anonymity on the network. All right, let's move on. Let's talk about SIP proxies. So the question is, what is a SIP proxy? And... Um, you know, how is it related to SBCs? And, and the two um, have some similarities. And so I put them both up on the slide here at the same time, um, but they have a couple of crit critical differences. And the SIP server, you can manipulate the SIP messages. It can, it can do some routing. It can do some of those functions. They're very powerful for doing those kinds of functions. They're very low overhead, easy to use. But a, but a true session border controller has to have this back-to-back -back user agent inside of it and also has to have some mechanism to manipulate the media. And that's built into uh, you know, a session border controller. So those two key elements. The back-to-back -back user agent allows the SIP header manipulation and the media engine can handle the, you know, the changes that are necessary, but also could do the routing and uh, some of the other functions. So um, they're close, but... Um, there's that one big difference, that back-to-back -back user agent. Now we've covered it. Hopefully it, it makes a lot more sense. So the next question is, you know, how does an SBC protect a network? You know, what, what, what's happening actually within the SBC when it comes to protecting the network? And, and we're going to pull that block diagram back in here again. In this example here, we're going to show, you know, the Internet on the left and maybe, you know, your network on the right. And um, the key thing is going to be is, is to detect and deflect traffic. So let's say, you know, there's a bad guy who's trying to break into your network and he's, he's doing, a, you know, a, basically a pa password scanner. He's trying to figure out, you know, the credentials to get into your network. You know, the, uh, we have algorithms inside, at least, you know, our session board controllers that detect that, that see, geez, you know, the, there should not be that many registrations in this short period of time. Something's wrong. Uh, this IP address is um, clearly trying to attack us. So we'll program the uh, firewall. We'll tell the firewall to block that IP address. So now all of a sudden the traffic never gets past the firewall. And similarly, you know, you might have bots who might um, come along and try to attack the network. Uh, and it's the same sort of algorithm. We're going to look at the, with the rate of registrations. We're going to look at the rate of invites, uh, the, the rate of new call setups, and we're going to manage that so that these attacks can't affect or get through and impact negatively your network behind, behind the network. So it's a set of algorithms that look at the rate. They look at um, the profile. Um, potentially, you could have pre-configured uh, whitelist and, and potentially blacklists when it comes to uh, the uh, you know the origin of, of the traffic, and anything else that doesn't fit that profile is going to be rejected. So let's talk about a encryption. So uh, what about encryption? What can an SBC do to help with encryption? Well, one of the common uh, use cases is to do either in, either encryption or decryption. 
so that there might be a leg, um, let's say a service provider provides a, a connection um, and it maybe you, you've ordered it and you want asked it to be encrypted. You know, an SBC can play the role of a, is a, um, either a decrypt or encrypt engine uh, so that the encrypted traffic can be put in the clear for the application, which makes, um, you know, basically removes a lot of the work from an application. So you might have, for example, an IVR and the IVR would like to, you know, keep its prompts and all that and nice clear G711, um, play those uh, out to the network. Um, but you don't want to worry about having to do the, all that encryption in your IVR platform. So the SBC can do it for you. And, it, you know, sitting on the border, it's got kind of this unique position where it can, it can secure the traffic and take that encrypted traffic and then uh, and put it in the clear. But it can also convert from one code or from one encryption key to another. So it can, what we call transcript. So maybe there's one key on the left and a different key on the right-hand side of this diagram converting from one uh, encryption key to another. And this allows um, service providers who uh, maybe have a low level of trust between each other um, to find a place to meet on a session border controller. So um, kind of an interesting use case and we, and we see this uh, fairly common. All right, let's talk about some more use cases for SBCs and maybe our sort of best of top list. Um, and probably one of the most common ones we run into is just traffic management. So the, the SBC has been given a job to manage traffic from either from multiple sources or to multiple destinations or multiple sources and destinations, kind of like a class four switch you used to do in the old telecom world. So it's going to be taking traffic in um, from different sources and, and sending off to different destinations. And again, using that back-to-back -back user agent is able to convert from you know, one format of SIP to another. But at the same time too, it can do things like call rate limiting. For example, um, we have one customer whose uh, retail customers um, have been given a certain service level agreement for call rate and they're not allowed to exceed that call rate. And so the SBC actually enforces that. And that's Vivaro, one of our Mexican customers does that. And that prevents those customers from overwhelming uh, the core of their network. Or load balancing, right? Distributing the load amongst multiple service providers. I think almost every one of our customers uses that feature. And that allows you to have multiple service providers or multiple routes to international operators, for example, and spread that load out. Uh, managing by, you know, route, route by the calling, called number, um, availability, all kinds of different external third-party algorithms that can use least cross-routing, for example. So it's a very common thing for an SBC to do is to manage that traffic and where it goes. Another example might be enterprise SIP trunking. This is where you might have an enterprise here in the big cloud and they're going to have multiple uh, service providers and they'd like to be able to have all these different service providers um, you know because there's different costs right either it's a toll-free inbound you know, international calling but one of the problems with these um, different service providers is they have slightly different versions of SIP or slight different configurations that are required so the SBC can now normalize that traffic and deliver it into an application inside the enterprise in, uh, in a you know standard normalized uh, format. But on top of that, going in the other direction, you know the SBC can also look at route tables and make decisions about okay, this is a toll free number, we'll send it out this provider, or maybe it's an international call, so we're going to send it to this particular provider. So traffic management and um, and, and normalization of traffic is is a very very common use case for SBCs. On the edge of a network, specifically for that, uh, uh, specifically go, go for uh, international calling. Let's say you have a different uh, voice provider, the SBC by the availability of the route, it, it can. It, there's a, a top. Uh, it could be for the cost, but also just the availability of routes. Uh, if you have a. Uh, two or three different voice provider, you have a list of different um, priority uh, or pr prior uh, provider. So uh, let's say the one, this one, okay, the, the, this this route for this international number uh, is not available, uh, skip right. to the second and so on. So uh, this is a, a very common use case also for, for reseller to make sure that uh, their end user 
can establish a call at any time. Uh, it will just choose a different provider instead of uh, denying the call or or not being not being able to connect it. Yep, absolutely. Nope, that's all. Those are really really common use cases. Another one that's popped up more recently is uh, our friend Stir Shaken, and uh, I think uh, probably uh, millions of gallons of ink has been spilled on this topic. But um, as I think you all know, Stir Shaken is a mechanism to to secure the caller information from one service provider to another. Uh, <clears throat> and our SPCs um, have found their way into a lot of projects where a service provider has to sign the call, put a, essentially what's called, put what's called a passport in the SIP header uh, before it leaves the internet network, um, authenticating that this is indeed um, a number that they know and that they trust with, uh, with a level of attestation. And um, we've got done lots of webinars on how it works, but the net, net of the whole thing is the SBC can play an important role of getting those calls signed and putting the uh, passports in the call header and then conversely at the receiving end to be able to pull the passport out of the call header and then go to a verification service to see if it's indeed a valid uh, caller information and uh, attestation before it gets passed on to uh, the subscriber so um key role in you know implementing to um, stir shake in lots of uh, lots of applications for that and I encourage you if, you, if you want to learn more about it, uh, we'll talk about uh, where to get at access to our video library a little bit here. Um, moving on, then there's another use case, which is redundancy. And this is just basically, you know, make using those techniques that we talked about just a couple of moments ago of redirecting traffic to provide uh, redundancy in a network. So not only having a primary route, but also having a backup and having the intelligence to be able to look and say, all right, you know, the, that network leg maybe went down or maybe there's a lot of congestion or maybe the MOS score, the, you know, the voice quality score, the, a lot of packets are getting dropped. Maybe we should send the traffic elsewhere. All that can happen with uh, SPCs. You, know, you can redirect the traffic. You can send it to alternate, um, alternate uh, um, service providers. Um, and maybe, for example, the internal traffic problems, and you can send it to different soft switches or different application servers inside a network. Another one that pops up too is from use cases is um, the communications as a service, and and this is pretty common: contact centers, um, IVR applications, conferencing servers, these kinds of things where subscribers might be work uh, at home or remote. And they're going to be sitting behind a natted firewall at, at home, and you need to be able to um, poke through that nat and also uh, keep the firewall open. And uh, an SBC does a really good job at doing that. So it can protect the network within the uh, service provider, but it can also um, keep this nat and do the nat traversal for the uh, subscribers as they try to get into the network. Uh, and again, this is a tip, sort of typical kind of application. And I think we mentioned uh, you know, a few contact center customers. This is uh, exactly right out of their playbook. All right, so that's it for the use cases. Let's talk about what are the offerings from Telco Bridges and what do we have for uh, SBCs? So we um, our family right now consists of three members. Um, starting at the top is our Pro SBC Plus. This is targeted towards the, you know, the big, bigger service providers. Um, we're going to be using use cases of access and pairing and SAS and some of those things. Um, with the encryption and in HA, it includes a plus one license, so there's a redundant extra license um, for uh, full HA functionality. Uh, it comes with 24-7 support, and uh, we sell it by the session per year as a subscription, and uh, that's uh, $2 per session per year with a 500 session minimum. Uh, and... Uh, so, um, you know, that would be installed on a server, AWS, or, or any one of a number of cloud platforms. Our Pro SBC, one step slightly back, um, the big difference is uh, it does not come with a plus one license and um, it comes with nine by five support, but it's quite a bit more affordable. It's only a dollar a session per year. Maybe a good fit for some hosted or enterprise applications that are not quite so critical that they need that plus one. Uh, so we see lots of, it's the majority of our, our customers 
um, that are in the enterprise and hosted space. This is a good fit for them. And then for the open source community, educational projects, these kinds of things, we have FreeSBC. And FreeSBC is session limited. There's a maximum number of 25 sessions, and you can have a maximum number of licenses. But it's free, and that uh, comes in handy for all kinds of projects from educational to just getting started to maybe, you know, learning how to use it or maybe lab environments, these kinds of things. So there's a quick chart here that shows some of the feature differences. I won't dig into it in real deep, but we have all this on our website. You can go take a look at it, and it kind of summarizes, you know, which, which of the feature sets uh, the, two, the three platforms come with. So the question might be, you know, where do we learn some more? Well, one of the great resources is that we've uh, invested a lot of time and energy on, on our YouTube channel. You can go to youtube.com slash telco bridges uh, and definitely uh, give us a subscribe there. And there's all kinds of content, instructional content, educational content, how-tos, um, visiting speakers, lots of other uh, interesting information there. Um, highly recommend um, you give it a shot and... Uh, Give us a visit there. And, of course, you know, the telcobridges.com website is also a great place to uh, go to learn more. So uh, with that, I want to say thanks for listening. We'll, we'll you know, and uh, I'll turn it back over to you, Philippe, and we can maybe we'll get some questions or some content that you brought. Thanks. Um, it's really interesting. Uh, I think uh, in 30-something minutes, uh, for me, you just touched the tip of the – the subject um yep. i did watch the entire webinar that you the presentation that you have on your youtube channel about what is a sbc uh what everybody saw here today is really just uh, like the tip of the iceberg if you really want to know more about uh, sbcs in telco bridges i really recommend to go see their youtube channel is very informational educational um there's ton of information there and uh, already today uh, it, it, it's amazing uh, all the knowledge um, but like I said it's just a tip yep. <laughs> uh, so uh, and Alan uh, you're a really good explainer so uh, uh, okay <laughs> um, even even at 10 o'clock in the morning with half a cup of coffee right <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah um, we have a question before I'm going uh, to do uh, my little part here. Sure. Um, so sure. Jamie is asking, in some previous SBC implementation, PBX was utilization, uh, utilizing LDAP for uh, extension authentication. Can yeah. your SBC support authentication being passed to PBX, uh, which is then passing to uh, uh, passing it along to LA? LDAP. Yeah, so the, yeah, it's a good question. Thanks, Jamie, for the question. And yeah, unfortunately, LDAP is is uh, more like a, a more of an enterprise use case, um, and uh, is not part of the feature set of our Pro SBC. We have a bunch of authentication mechanisms, radius, um, tables, um, all kinds of other mechanisms that are used in the service provider space, but but LDAP's not one of them. So hopefully that answers the question. Good, thank you. So, is um, is your SBC a Microsoft yeah. Team Direct Routing certified? Right. No, it's not. Yeah, we um, we looked at the market, and uh, we've just made some decisions to go a different direction. There's plenty of SBCs that um, can do uh, direct routing, and uh, we just decided that uh, we can pour our investment into into other areas and other use cases. So, um, no, it's not. And and good and for Microsoft Team, I know it's not really an SBC, but uh, VoIP MS is compatible with a different uh, uh, Microsoft Team connector. Uh, it's not direct routing directly, but we we do offer uh, some uh, uh, Microsoft Team connector. Uh, it's sure. probably a little bit uh, outside of the topic, but for your information, Jamie. And last question, uh, or PBX is based on Asterix, uh, which back-to-back uh, -back user, uh, which is a back-to-back -back user, why does it make sense to have a back-to-back -back, uh, user agent protecting another yeah. one? Yep. Yeah. So with the biggest thing we see with Asterix applications 
is um, the desire to scale their Asterisk application. So, um, in fact, we got a great use case of Fusion, who's uh, one of a service provider. And, you know, he had been using his Asterisk server. It's not the one who I, you know, I quoted in the uh, in the webinar. But once he grew to multiple Astra servers, he needed to be able to manage that traffic, and that's where you know the session border controller be with you know the B2B UA and the routing engine was able to then direct traffic to the right Astra server in a very efficient way. With um, and on top of that, was able to uh, protect all the Astra servers from one point. So. Um, that's probably the biggest reason that, that uh, SBCs are used in an asterisk environment is for managing that traffic before it gets to the asterisk server. Great. Right. I think Good. that was. So uh, I'll stop share then. And, yeah, uh, I think that was the last question. So, uh, okay. all right. So, uh, most of you are. Uh, VoIPMS customers, so you probably already know about VoIPMS, but uh, for the one who's not a uh, VoIPMS customer, I would like to do a little introduction about our services. So uh, VoIP, who is VoIPMS? We are a Montreal-based voice uh, over IP company uh, founded in 2007. It's uh, over 15 years anniversary this year. So we offer a vast range of telephonic feature, hosted PPX, sub trunking, we offer uh, DIDs in more than 20,000 rate centers. This number is not updated yet. In North America and in more than 60 countries, uh, I think uh, we uh, closely uh, reached the 100 now. We offer international call in more than 125 countries, toll-free numbers, call conference, SMS, MMS, and everything. So we offer hosted PBX and subtracting. Both uh, services, it's available. Why uh, VoIP DNS? It's a uh, fully hosted, feature rich, bring your own solution. So um, you get any SIP capable or pretty much any SIP capable uh, solution it can be uh, connected to or infrastructures. And our business model is completely pay as you go. So at usage. When I'm saying bring your own solution, just this is just a glance of. Uh, all the partners in the industry that we have uh, interoperability uh, certifications, Delco Bridge is uh, one of them. You can connect pretty much anything to VoIP MS, uh, and on top of it, all these brands certified that with that MS, it's certified to use their devices with uh, their 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 hardware, their software, and so on. We even have uh, other partnership with Headset.com or. Uh, APIS training, which is uh, headset, of course, and the other one is technical training website or university, if I can say. We are connecting all the dots. Uh, we have an ecosystem of partners uh, in the industry of uh, telecommunication. All the basic uh, security features, all the good stuff. So two-step verification, email notification can allow max calling time. Uh, but if you have a SBC, uh, it's probably something you will not need. <laughs> Um, allow calling area, same thing here again, SBC can manage that, uh, foreign IP card, uh, it, this is a mix of both. So you can uh, just restrict, uh, from where some specific I, which IP can access your account or, or your devices. Uh, and we offer call encryption as well. A little bit about our hosted feature. This is just a glance here again of all the hosted PBX features. So if you want, you can build up a complete phone system, um, business phone system. You can build up a complete complex and scalable phone system with our feature. Uh, so, and you can put uh, your SBC uh, between all the hosted uh, feature that we are offer. You can check on void.ms. You will have the full list of the feature that we offer. Another part of uh, void.ms, it's uh, all the pups, uh, point of presence that we have. We offer point of uh, presence in three continent, Canada, United States, France, United Kingdom, and Amsterdam. Um, and also um, OCN in, in Sydney. Uh, we monitor our network 24 seven, seven day a week, all year long. So we make sure that the service keep running and uh, you can connect to the closest pub, your equipment. So it reduce any kind of uh, jitter latency and so on. We also offer a complete API with more than 300 function and we keep adding some 
pretty much every month. Uh, you can buy toll free directly from the API, start a porting process. You can send SMS, receive SMS. You can uh, connect, you can do your endpoint identification. You can retrieve your voicemails, uh, manage your hosted PPX features. You can do pretty much everything you want with uh, the, the, um, the API that we are offering. A little bit about uh, our financial feature. So the business model, like I said, it's prepaid and pay as you go. So you're only spending the money for what you use. It's completely self-serve. We have uh, also a smart and secure auto replenishment uh, feature. So every 24 hour, if it needs, it will auto top up your account. So you make sure your account is never running out of funds. Uh, it's fully contractless and we offer free porting in Canada and United States. So all for local DID and toll free. There's other countries that we offer portability. For some, there's cost, for some there's not. Feel free to reach out to us uh, and we will figure it out if you need for international porting. A little bit uh, of our success story. So not going to go uh, through uh, all of them very uh, deeply, but VoIPMS is suitable for SMB and enterprise. Of course, enterprise will probably will not use or hosted PBX. Some do, but most of them will have their own infrastructure and they will use VoIPMS as their SIP trunk provider, namely uh, Toys R Us, Icon Health and Fitness, and cPanel. C, uh, Toys R Us uh, use us for all their branch door pretty much everywhere in, in Canada. Uh, so that was for the retail directly on site. Icon Health Fitness and cPanel, it's another use case. They were using us for all their remote corporate offices uh, and cPanel specifically all for their communication center, uh, contact centers and uh, into their headquarter in Houston. A little bit about our team. So I really like this photo. It just uh, show how diverse uh, our team is. So uh, this is uh, not everybody because of course nobody it's not everybody was able to make it uh, for this party but i'm the little guy in the middle <laughs> voip ms it's a team of more than 50 now i think we're closer to say we're 60 or something with an average seniority at voip.ms of five years of experience in in voice uh, and voip specifically or telecommunication overall so we offer uh, support 24 7 through chat tickets and email and the support is free. You can use us as much as you need. We are geared to support you in French, in English, and Spanish. All or documentation, pretty much everything is documented in, in the tree language. Uh, we have wiki, like the knowledge base about our services, the configuration guide for Telco Bridge Pro SBC and Free SBC is also listed there. So if you want to you can have a look, you will. Uh, we explain how to connect. VoIP MS and uh, Telco Bridge there. We have a YouTube channel as well. So uh, I'm doing like Alan and I'm promoting it. <laughs> um, go subscribe to it. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a very uh, informational channel. We try to stay as much as possible away from uh, um, just straight up uh, publicity. So guides, tutorials, uh, webinars, and so on. And as well, for the people on Facebook, uh, we have a, it's not, it's not a close, but it's a community group. You can join on Facebook, the, the community group. Some useful resources about our service. We have uh, the wiki, the knowledge base, like as I was mentioning, you can uh, find uh, the wiki article from Void.ms uh, to uh, to connect uh, Telco Bridge to Void.ms. Some other article uh, and the YouTube channel, as I mentioned. Little promotion for the one who don't know VoIP.ms and would like to try to install uh, VoIP.ms uh, with Telco Bridges can download and uh, use Telco Bridges with a free SBC. And uh, that's one part. And on the other end, you can sign up at VoIP.ms and you will get a $10 bonus on your first deposit. So it will get you uh, uh, 25 total. With $25 in your account, you can test it for a month. It's uh, not going to be... Uh, too difficult. So that's pretty much it for me. You can use, you can take a note my 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 contact detail. Feel free to send me an email. If uh, I'm not able to help you directly, I'll make sure to find the appropriate resources. Feel free to reach out if you have any question about the service. Very good. I want to thank you 
for uh, inviting me today, and thanks for everyone who joined. I appreciate the, your attention and your and look forward to hearing from each one of you. It's uh, all my pleasure, Alan. I really appreciate uh, that you uh, accepted the invitation. Uh, it's been uh, years that we are discussing for it, so uh, <laughs> I can't I can't wait to uh, to uh, come across and uh, meet you in a, in another trade show. So uh, yeah, it'd be wonderful. Great. So thanks everyone for joining today and have a nice day.